Good morning po sa ating lahat, mga kapatid. Pasensya na po, medyo namamawas pa po ako dahil po sa camping na inatandan po namin last week. Uh, nagpakabata po ako ulit. <laughs> so sabi po nila, wala pong matanda-matanda pagdating sa camping. Pagka if you are young at heart, uh, for sure, may enjoy mo pa rin yung uh, youth camp. Um, the message that I'm gonna be uh, delivering this morning, mga kapatid, is entitled, Are You Drifting? So what do we mean when we say drifting? Drifting also means um, falling away, um, letting go, or not knowing where you are heading. Ika nga. Now, um, before I start the discussion, I want to point out uh, the key points of my message for this morning. So for this morning, mga kapatid, in my message, we would understand the things that we should know about drifting as Christians. We would also be looking at some of the common signs of drifting. And how would we identify, based on ourselves, based on um, what the things or what our circumstances are, kung ano ba yung mga signs na meron ako, if I am indeed drifting away. And of course, we would be looking at the biblical remedies against uh, drifting. Now, I want to share a story sa inyo, mga kapatid. The story is entitled, The Tragedy of Two Fishermen. The, the story goes this way. So, meron pong um, dalawang magkaibigan. And these two friends are both fishermen. And one day, they went out fishing. They went out fishing above a low dam. So, sa isang river, merong isang dam. And they went on fishing on that particular river near the dam. Now, as they were concentrating on catching fish, they were hurling their nets um, they were, they also have their catching poles, ikanga, or fishing poles. As they were concentrating on catching fish, they were unaware, or they were caught off guard, na they are already drifting away. They never realized that they have drifted until not far from the water flowing over the dam. So, they drifted away, hindi nila napapansin, na malapit na pala sila dun sa parang waterfalls, dun sa pinakadulo nung Dam. Now, when they realized their very, very dangerous situation, what they did is that they kept on rowing. So, sinagsagwan sila na nagsagwan with all their strength, with all their uh, lives para lang makaligtas sila dun sa pagbagsak nila, dun sa dam. However, yung current, it became too powerful for them to keep their boat from going over. Below the dam, mga kapatid, was um, dashing with strong force ikaw nga, with, um, with, with strong force over big rocks, mga boulders, and, uh, and crevices in the rocks. So very, 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 very dangerous at nakakatakot yung pagpabagsakan nila. So, caught by the swirling waters, yung powerful current, wala silang nagawa, mga kapatid. They just kept on rowing, however, they still fell down. Now, after days of relentless searching ng mga nag-rescue sa kanila, nahanap yung body ng isa. He's dead. And after a few days, nahanap din yung isa. Patay na rin. Two or three days later, both of them were dead. Now, the, the story of the tragedy of two fishermen, mga kapatid, also tells us that the danger of drifting away is not limited to our physical realm. This could also happen in our Christian lives. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1, mga kapatid, we find a warning against drifting. And that's going to be the center of our discussion for this morning. Sadly, it is uncommon, or it is not uncommon for Christians to drift towards destruction. Brethren, brothers and sisters, are you drifting would you know if you were drifting? With this lesson, I hope I uh, stimulate careful introspection within ourselves regarding the dangers that drifting away poses, drifting away from the Lord. Let us consider first the things that we should know about drifting. Okay? First and foremost, mga kapatid, very, very obvious. Drifting requires no effort. Right? Those two fishermen, what, they, what were they doing when they were on the boat? They were just catching fish. Hindi nila napapansin na they were slowly drifting away. 
Same thing with our Christian lives, mga kapatid. Just stop owing. Tumigil ka lang sa pagsasagwan or tacking against the wind. And our boats, ourselves, will begin to drift. It requires no effort. Another thing is, in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1, it's, uh, it's stipulated there, or it says there, Therefore, we must give the most earnest heed to the things that we have heard, lest we drift away. The same is true, like what I said earlier, mga kapatid, the same is true for the Christian. That's why we were told to give more earnest heed to the things that we have heard, to the things that we have learned, lest we drift away. Aside from drifting, aside from the fact that drifting requires no effort, drifting, brothers and sisters, is, it is also an unconscious process. Those two fish fishermen that I was talking about earlier, they did not know that they are already drifting away. So, it is also possible for us Christians to be unaware that we are already drifting. So, in a boat, mga kapatid, or... <clears throat> In a river, um, if you're gonna look at a river, sometimes very quiet siya, very still, parang walang uh, disturbance. But if you're gonna look underneath, meron tayong tinatawag na undercurrents. And these undercurrents are unnoticeable on the surface. These undercurrents are very, very powerful and very, very strong. Pag nasa plane ka naman, sometimes the wind or the gravitational uh, force affects how the plane flies or how the plane moves without you or without the pilot realizing it. Now, the, the same is true, mga kapatid, in our spiritual or in the spiritual realm. Many individual Christians, many of us, have slowly drifted away without even them realizing that they have already drifted away. Many churches nowadays have gradually drifted into error. They also have drifted away. Only one day to find themselves that they are already far removed from the scriptures. So that's one thing that we should also know. Very, very important, mga kapatid, when it comes to drifting. It requires no effort, and it is also an, an unconscious process. Another thing is, when, when we say drifting, Drifting is never upstream or against the tide. So if you are uh, riding on a boat sa river, ang boat hindi siya magdi-drift away ng palaban dun sa alon ng stream. Right? Or ang isang boat na nasa dagat, hindi siya magdi-drift away ng palaban dun sa alon. Right? So drifting away, brothers and sisters, is never upstream or against the tide. In our Christian lives, in our lives as Christians, faithfulness to the Lord is like riding on a boat, but we are oaring. We are oaring upstream. Um, in order for us to be um, to be laden with strength, para makuha natin yung lakas natin, we should constantly be adding to our faith. Let's look at one of the scriptures, one of the verses that we have here in Second Peter chapter one, verse five. If you have your Bibles with you, you could uh, read with me. It says there, But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge. Aside from that, we also must continue to grow. To grow where? Or to grow with what? But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. So the moment we stop growing, the moment we stop um, adding faith or adding knowledge to our faith, adding diligence to ourselves in our faith, the moment we stop oaring, mga kapatid, the moment we stop rowing our boats upstream, we would drift away. We would go backwards or we would go even downwards. So let, let us all take note of that. Again, drifting away, it's never upstream or against the time. And habang tumatagal, habang uh, papalapit ka dun sa dam, sa dulo ng dam, 
the speed downstream increases. And since it increases, or the speed increases, the dangers that it poses also increases. Now, may, may kasabihan eh, yung mga, uh, mga nagbo-boating or yung may mga knowledge pagdating sa kayaking or, um, or sa kung ano mga sport na merong uh, kinalaban sa river. Pagka naririnig mo na yung bagsak ng tubig, they say na malapit na yung waterfall. Right? Now, when we can hear the noise of the waterfall, it is already too late. Now, pag nasa dagat ka naman and you drifted away, Pag hindi mo na makita yung lupa, yung wala ka na makitang uh, island or wala ka na makitang land, everything is just sea, it's gonna be very difficult for you to discern whether you are really moving or drifting away. It's also similar to our lives as Christians, mga kapatid. As we move farther and farther away from God, from the Lord, we tend to care less about what we do about our responsibilities as Christians, about the things that we are required to do as Christians. Drifting, mga kapatid, it's, it's not only dangerous to the person that is drifting away. It is also dangerous to others. Like a ship. Di ba? ba? Pagka ang pilot, pinabayaan niya yung ship, ano mangyayari sa mga pasahero? They are also gonna be in grave danger. Now, same thing with our Christian lives. For example, mga kapatid, parents. If parents are drifting away from the Lord, if parents are, are neglecting their responsibilities in the church, soon enough, the children will also be affected. They will lose golden opportunities for them to be able to teach their children. And that is found in Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 4. Let's quickly take a look at that verse, mga kapatid. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. Dito, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but raise them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. So let us also take note of this, brothers and sisters. Now, um, in the Christian world, many are tossed to, to and fro and carried about by every wind of Doctrine. Merong iba na they, they simply just drift away, um, being tossed and fro, carried about by different doctrines, as said in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. Everybody, please read with me. So we are no longer to be children, tossed back and forth by waves and carried about by every wind of teaching by the trickery of people who craftily carry out their deceitful schemes. So it's very dangerous to them. And another thing is, ultimately, drifting away ends in shipwreck or ends in tragedy. Now the boat earlier that I was talking about in my story, it crashed on the rocks. It went over the falls. Now for those who are spiritually drifting away, through their own neglect, there shall be no escape for a shipwreck, for a punishment. That is found in Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. Now, the danger of drifting, mga kapatid, it is real. It is happening as of the moment. It is happening now. Now, I, I want to consider this uh, message, mga kapatid, as a warning for everyone or for, for us. So again, I ask, are we drifting? Are we um, manifesting these um, signs? But to help us answer these questions, or this question, mga kapatid, am I really drifting? What are the signs that I can take a look at for me to know if I am indeed drifting? <clears throat> Here are some of the common signs of drifting, mga kapatid, as evident in, in the Christian world. Number one, diminishing desire to study God's Word. This also involves praying, mga kapatid. Now, the Bible is a very unique, unique book. It is the source of information not found anywhere else. Without God's revelation, how could we truly know our origin, our purpose, and our destiny? It tells us of sin's dreadful consequences and how God saves us from 
sin. Now, pilots and uh, mapa, aeroplano man yan, or ship, they have an instrument that they use for them to be able to know what direction they are going. Diba? And, that, and that instrument is a compass. Right? Now, for us Christians, our compass is the Bible. It provides direction for living happy or living happy and useful lives. As said in Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 to 3, one of my favorite verses, mga patid, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in, and in his law he meditates. Now, when one loses their desire to study God's word, they are already drifting away. Same thing with prayers, mga kapatid, or praying. Prayer is a wonderful blessing, an avenue to communicate with God. Now, pilots and ships will not sail or will not fly their airplanes unless they have a means to communicate with kung ano man yun, yung port or yung tower. Ang tawag doon, brothers and sisters? Yung sa air, airport, yung parang Control tower, there you go. Yung control tower, they should have a means for them to be able to communicate. Now, if we do not communicate with our control tower, as Christians, what's going to happen to us? We're going to drift away. We're going to lose track of where we are going. Same thing with prayers. We should be prayerful Christians. When the Christian, or when a Christian prays less and less, he is drifting more and more. So that's for diminishing desire to study God's Word. Another indication, mga kapatid, another sign of drifting is this, diminishing desire to be with God's people. And this includes attending services to worship God as well as joining activities um, in the church. One should always have the attitude of um, the psalmist, si David. If we no longer rejoice in the worship of God in the presence of brethren, we are drifting. We are to be concerned with edifying one another. And that is one of our responsibilities as Christians. Edifying one another. If you have your Bibles with you, mga kapatid, let's quickly take a look at Romans chapter 14, verse 19. Romans chapter 14, verse 19. So then, let us pursue what makes for peace and for building up one another. Now, such kind of, such kind of edific, edification, mga kapatid, should happen even daily. So we should, we were instructed to edify one another daily. That is in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13. They say, mga kapatid, merong isang saying na uh, sinasabi, Show me who your friends are. And I will tell you who you are. For the right kind of friendship strengthens us, while the wrong kind of, uh, of fellowship or wrong kind of friendship will lead us to sin. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33. Bad company corrupts good morals. So when a Christian prefers uh, the companionship of people of the world, rather than fellow Christians, he is drifting towards the rocks of spiritual destruction. Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify one another. Another sign of drifting, mga kapatid, is this. Diminishing desire to share the gospel. When one obeys the gospel, mga kapatid, that person knows that God blotted out his sins and made him a new creature in Christ, and he wants to tell the world about Jesus. That is stipulated in Acts chapter 8, verse 4. When a Christian no longer has the desire to take the message of salvation to others, to share the gospel or the word of God to others, he is also drifting away. So these first three, mga kapatid, talks about diminishing. Diminishing desires. Diminishing desire to study God's Word. Diminishing desire to be with God's people. And diminishing desire to share the Gospel. 
However, there is one um, one common sign of drifting, mga kapatid, which talks about not diminishing desires, but increasing desires instead. What kind of sign is that? Increasing desire over worldly things. Within passing time, mga kapatid, or let me tell you one story. There was this one person na um, uh, this, this young man received a worldly honor. So parang he became very famous, he became very, very popular, and he became very, very rich. And his parents were very, very excited beyond measure for their son. However, these parents or these family um, never demonstrated such emotion over spiritual matters. And within passing time, as time went by, as time passed by, the, the entire family had drifted beyond the point of no return. Apostle John, or the Apostle John, warns us against the love of the world and the things of this world. Let us all take a look at 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17. Sabi dito mga kapatid, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Because all that is in the world, the desire of the flesh and the desire of the eyes and the arrogance produced by material processions is not from the Father but is from the world. And the world is passing away with all its desires. But the person who does the will of God remains forever. Such as increasing enjoyment in the worldly pleasures, mga kapatid. Paul described in these verses that some of us, or some of the people in this world, are lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Now, if we reach the point when we find more pleasure in some worldly activity or in some cares of this world, mga kapatid, than meeting with others to worship God, we are definitely spiritually Adrift. We are definitely drifting away. Now, these are some of the signs of drifting away from God. If we are to remain close to God, mga kapatid, the fight is not easy. Here are some tips or here are some remedies against drifting away. If you feel like you have some of these signs, if you feel like some of these signs are manifested in you, here are some remedies, mga kapatid, that we can take a look at for us to get back on track. Number one, of course, if you, want, if you don't want to be adrift, if you don't want to drift away, keep rowing. All of us are riding our spiritual boats. And for us not to drift away, we should take heed, or we should be on guard, and we should keep rowing. Spiritually speaking, mga kapatid, this involves diligence. Like what, 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 like what was me mentioned in Hebrews chapter 2, verses 1 to 3 earlier. It also means keeping abounding or keeping abounding in our Christian graces because in our, in our Christian lives, when it comes to rowing, there's no such thing or there's no such word as retirement. Hindi ka pwedeng tumigil sa pagsagwan if you want to keep close to God. There's no place for retirement in living the life of a Christian. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. So keep rowing. Make sure that we are always filled with energy by making ourselves spiritually fed. Number two, watch out for undercurrents. So I described what undercurrents are earlier, mga kapatid. So undercurrents, yun yung mga strong currents na nasa ilalim. They are not really, really noticeable on the surface, but they are happening underneath. We must always be on guard for undercurrents in our lives. Ano ba yung mga undercurrents natin in our lives, brothers and sisters? Anything in mind? Starts with the letter T. Tem temptation. So, a lot of temptations are abound in this world. And for us to be able to keep ourselves from drifting away, to prevent ourselves from drifting away, we should watch out for temptations. We should watch out for undercurrents. For 
we have a fleshly nature which wages war against the soul. Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 to 18. Another remedy, mga kapatid, expect to go against the tide. Here in this world, there are many tides that sweep us away, such as popularity, sa mga young people, peer pressure, the praise of others, modernism, skepticism, humanism, and yung pagdating naman sa mga enemies ng church, liberalism, worldliness, probably these are the greatest enemies of the church in our lifetime. Individually, mga kapatid, sa ating mga sarili, neglect, indifference, apathy, lack of care, lack of interest and concern. These are the things that would sweep us away. If one drifts along with the majority, he certain, certainly will be lost. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 to 14. Now, in our Christian lives, mga kapatid, those things, those tides that sweep us away, are abound. And as Christians, we should be expected to go against the tide. And of course, if you don't want to drift away, you, have, you, you should have a strong anchorage. Anchorage that is rooted and grounded in Christ. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6. Therefore, just as you have received Christ Jesus our Lord, continue to live your lives in Him. Our minds should also be anchored to the truth. Sa katotohanan lamang po, mga kapatid. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 14 to 15. Along with our um, minds that are anchored to the truth and our roots are being grounded in Christ, we should also possess an unshakable hope. Our hope for our for the everlasting everlasting life that Jesus has promised us should be unshakable, and our foundation should be very strong, and that is in the love of Jesus Christ. Now, again, brothers and sisters, let me ask you: these um, again, these um, remedies against drifting are always always readily available for us. But are we really drifting away? Here are some questions that we can ask ourselves. Is my desire to study God's Word diminishing? Is my desire to be with God's people not what it has been in the past? Have I lost my desire to save those who are lost? And am I too much enamored by the things of the Word? In any way, mga kapatid, we must confess that we are drifting. Then, May we encourage one another to give earnest heed as we were marked by the writer to the Hebrews. Let's look at that verse one more time. Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast, and every 